If you have not seen the Sphere in Vegas, it is a sight to behold. Hey everybody, Tim Boyum here with Spectrum News, political anchor. Normally, the Tying It Together with Tim Boyum podcast coming to you at weekly. However, we are working my other program, from Porch Politics Across America, driving from New York City to LA, hitting battleground states along the way. We left a week ago. Now we're about to wrap it up at the Santa Monica Pier in California. We have hit two battleground states today. Uh, we hit Arizona earlier today. We hit Nevada this afternoon and tonight. If you're watching this, you can see behind me here, we are just off the strip. And I, I don't know if you've seen those videos of the sphere. Uh, it is spectacular. Uh, we didn't get to go in it, but uh, the outside of it even, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. It is everything that you thought it would be, uh, and it is cool, so cool. So uh, we are about to wrap up our trip. It's been an incredible uh, time. If you didn't know, we've been trying to do it via electric vehicle. Did I know we were going to make it? No. Am I pretty happy with how things have gone? Yeah. Did I put a lot of extra time into our travels uh, to make sure that we had enough time for charges? 100%. Was it stressful? Did I have to rearrange a few things here and there because of it? Yeah. So here are our totals today. We did three charges. Uh, we went 295 miles today, an hour and 17 minutes of charging time, and it cost $45.75. Now, two of those charges, two out of the three, were here in Las Vegas. We filled up right when we got here. And then uh, late tonight, I went and refilled again so we could go fresh in the morning. Uh, it appeared that the heat did impact the battery uh, because it went down 15%, I think, when we only went nine miles uh, to an interview this afternoon. Um, and the fan, it's like a fan or whatever it takes to cool the battery, it was running a lot uh, while we were going to shoot that interview. So we started this morning in Flagstaff, Arizona, a uh, battleground state, Arizona, right? Uh, Donald Trump won by 3.5% in 2016. Joe Biden won by 0.3% in 2020. Some 11,000 votes, wildly close. Arizona now, uh, at least for now, a swing state. And so we talked to a couple people in town before we left and headed toward Vegas. Talked to the Democratic Party chair here. Uh, and she says, look, we they feel the pressure uh, from, you know, Democrats, the Harris campaign to win, to re-deliver. There's also Arizona Proposition 139, which is the right to abortion initiative that is on the ballot. So that changes things too, right? Um, it will allow abortions essentially up to 24 weeks uh, from the current law in Arizona. And it could draw, you know, more turnout. Obviously, Democrats are hoping. Not only Democrats, it'll inspire those to vote that may not have in the past, but also they're hoping independents will come with them. So anyways, I talked with the local party chair of the county that Flagstaff is in about the increased pressure that they are feeling. And believe me, the temperature is rising in Arizona. In Arizona, it's hot. You know, it's, it's just hot. Even up here at 7,000 feet in Flagstaff, we feel the heat. We feel the pressure. Um, we have so many ads coming in. We have people coming in from all over the country to canvas with us. I've got a woman from Massachusetts living in my home right now. All right. So just before we headed to downtown to meet with the Democratic Party chair, we went and uh, we're driving in town and it came to this intersection. And there was a gentleman in the median between the two sets of traffic, different directions. And he was holding up a Trump sign. And my immediate inclination is pretty much to always say, what's that guy thinking? So we pulled over, we came around, we pulled over. And the guy was really focused on things like uh, migrant children and the border issues. He had a helmet on actually. And I asked him what that was all about. And he said, um, uh, liberals have been threatening him uh, <laughs> at these intersections uh, when he wants to talk to them. But I was really curious about uh, whether or not he would believe the results of the election. This has been an issue all over the country. Arizona dealt with this in 2020 because obviously the vote total was just 11,000. And so I asked him, would you accept the results of the election if Donald Trump loses? Here's what he said. I will not. And the reason why is because there's so much evidence to 
prove the election frauds that has been going back to like even before 2016. And Arizona in particular has been the epicenter of a lot of the fraud. Will you believe him if he wins? Yes. I don't believe in the system. I just believe in the people's ability to override their fraud. So the truth is that there is not a lot of widespread evidence that uh, there was widespread fraud in Arizona or, frankly, any other state, for the matter of fact. So uh, that's the situation. However, I do think it's really important to show that perspective because that shows that the race is close or maybe even if it's not close, what our country might be facing um, from certain supporters that, you know, may not believe it and what we as a nation might deal with if that's the case. By the way, there's those on the right that believe the left will think the same thing. So after that, we headed straight to Vegas. Uh, it was a beautiful drive. Mountains off in the distance. I really wanted to go see the Grand Canyon. We just did not have uh, the right amount of time to do that. But just for your sake, Vegas has become, or Nevada, has also become a battleground state. Uh, it, it has largely been blue, but it's been close. Hillary Clinton won by 2.4% in 2016. Joe Biden won by 2.4% in 2020. Uh, so that, that's what we're seeing. I, I should say also, by the way, the difference between Arizona, Nevada, and Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. We, of course, I watched news because of the time zone difference. I was up at like 4.30 this morning. There are lots of ads on TV. But it is nowhere near to the same extent of the amount of ads and the type of ads that we saw in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. So it's clear that uh, Arizona and Nevada are battleground states, but it's not quite the same. So when we came to uh, Nevada, uh, I want to talk a little bit about election security, believe in the results, which is ironic because of what we just saw in uh, Arizona with the gentleman that we talked to there. And there's a, a group uh, that is working on trying to make sure that people do believe in the election and the results. And so we met with uh, former governor of Nevada, uh, Bob List. He's part of a group called Right Count. And they are trying to instill confidence back in American elections and that people can trust the results. People can trust things like mail-in ballots. Bob List is a Republican. Uh, former governor, as I mentioned, Nevada. Here's what he told me about the challenges that he faces with even people he knows within his own house. It's been a lot of tension. There's, and, and it, you know, the tension kind of has manifested itself in, in a lot of anger and, and vitriol, and uh, it's, people aren't talking to each other that much. This, this last two or three months, we've been working very hard to try to bring people together uh, and to get everybody to come out and vote. Because when the election uh, four years ago was so bitter that people afterward were all saying, oh, if there were Trump people were saying, you know, they st Biden stole the election and we're never gonna vote again. And uh, so there's been a lot of effort to try to bring people back to the table and say, no, no, that's not what happened. You know, he lost the election, he lost in Nevada. Uh, if you wanna support him this time, you got to go out and vote. Now, I do realize that a lot of you are going to say this. Look, we're not going to get through this election with everybody believing that the election's secure and people aren't going to complain. And you're you're pretty much right. But they believe that they're on the right path. And if you just help even a small amount of people over time, that it will make a huge difference. So we will see. It's been an amazing um, trip, folks. We hit the road first thing in the morning. We're going to leave uh, about 6 a.m. Pacific time because that's what we're in right now. And then we're going to head to Santa Monica, the pier, to end this trip. And uh, we'll have stats, you know, as we mentioned with some of the stats today about how the, the car charge worked. And, I mean, we've made it pretty much. I probably just jinxed ourselves, but we've done it. Uh, did it take longer? Yeah. Was it cheaper than what it taken a gas car? Yeah, although the rental was a little bit more than a regular car too. Um, but more importantly, I think we learned a lot about the electorate out there in this election. And I'll have some thoughts on that when this all wraps up. Uh, but there, there's a lot of really interesting things 
about this election and the electorate and what may or may not happen after this election is over and how we move forward. So, again, we leave first thing in the morning from Las Vegas to the Santa Monica Pier. We will wrap it up. Make sure to head to the uh, Spectrum News app to get all the behind the scenes pictures and everything. Um, again, that's the Vegas Strip behind us. It's been a, a great visit, great time. And hopefully, we'll talk to you again tomorrow from the Santa Monica Pier.